Alright, hi everyone. We are here. Welcome back. We are doing mushroom. We're doing pork chops and creamy Dijon mushroom sauce today. Now, the recipe that we posted, I'm going to tweak a little bit of it. We're having, still having issues with our smoke detector. You might want to turn the music down a little, honey. Um, we're still having a little bit of issues with our smoke detectors. So we're, we're not going to do anything in the oven, at least not today. So I've decided that we're going to do pan roasted crispy potatoes instead of oven roasted. And if we've got time, I'm going to make uh, some uh, spice fried apples to go with this too. Because pork and apples are just kind of a thing. Alright. So I've already got our potatoes boiling back here because you need to let them par cook first before throwing them in the pan. So those are almost ready to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get our onion and garlic started. And Travis is going to uh, clean and slice our mushrooms. Now the reason why you, uh, he's going to wipe them down with a paper towel. And the reason why is because you don't really want to wash mushrooms because they absorb so much water that they don't brown if you wash them. So just uh, having a once over with a paper towel to remove any visible dirt and anything else is going to die in the heat anyway, so it's fine. So I've got one yellow onion that I've cut into half and peeled the skin off and I'm thinly slicing this. And this will be for our sauce. After I finish getting my veggies ready to go, I'm going to start frying our pork chops. <coughs> and you're just going to slice those mushrooms too. Yes. I know. He's using white button mushrooms, but if you want to use like uh, baby portobello's or whatever other mushroom, it's just that the every plate kit that this came from actually gave us the white buttons, so we're using them. Even though I'm not a big fan of button mushrooms. I'm not really either, just because they don't have a lot of good flavor, but I feel like with this they'll be okay. Normally I'd absolutely use the Baby Bellas, those are my favorites. Yep. Or stuff like this. Alright, now I'm just going to mince our garlic up. I already had a big follows. Oh, cool. What? No, no, the bots, they come in and say, want to become famous? Buy um, follows now. Um, I hate bots. So this is just one garlic clove for this entire recipe, and I know that sounds like not a lot, but it'll still be okay. Especially for us. Yeah, when most of our recipes have, like, at least two. But we've also got this Tuscan heat spice seasoning that has garlic in it, and I always use garlic powder. Garlic salt. Or garlic salt in my food, so it'll be okay. Music, as always, by... What? Who's some music by? You should know by now. I don't know. You don't know? No. Kevin McLeod. Okay. <laughs> I don't pay attention. I'm sorry. Alright. So this front pan is going to be for our pork and our sauce. And this back pan will eventually be where our potatoes go to crisp up. It's just back there because the burner that I'm going to use to do that is currently on the heat boiling our potatoes, which are almost ready to go. But I'm going to get the pork started and then do those. 
I'm going to need a plate to season our chops. So I move this off to the side real quick. No. I just moved it. So I've got 10 ounces of boneless pork chops here. This is what every plate gives us. They're really good. This is about what you want for 10, for two people is just 10 ounces of meat will be fine. Especially since the rest of this meal is so hearty, you really don't need a ton of meat. Like yes, the pork chops are the base of this, but everything else is going to be so delicious that it, it'll be fine. All right. If there's any extra juice, Go ahead and drain that off. Alright, so we're going to season these up. Salt, or pepper, this is my garlic salt. And this is our Tuscan heat spice. Only about a teaspoon of this is going on. It, these pork chops. This has garlic, basil, rosemary, red pepper flakes, ground fennel, and oregano in it. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. The only reason why I'm going to go ahead and use this is because we've had this spice before. And it's the fennel is not overpowering. Personally, I hate fennel, but with this, I I feel like it'll be okay. All right. So one side is seasoned up. I'm gonna use my tongs, damn it, to flip these chops over. Is so that I can, open? Yeah. Mushrooms are chopped. Thank you. So some of the this spice is going to go on the potatoes. Some of it's going to go directly onto the pork chops. And then the rest of it is going to go into our sauce. Yep. And they give you like a tablespoon of this spice for all three things. So you need like a teaspoon in each thing. All right. That looks about right. If you want, you can start chopping the apples or slicing the apples. So we're also going to go ahead and do some fried apples with this. This is something my mom did a lot when I was a kid and they're delicious. So you can really use any kind of apple you like with this. Um, these are gala apples though. And you really only need about one per person. How do I chop them? So you're going to slice these. Like this? So what I would do is cut it in half. Well, here. What about the core? You do it. I don't know how to do it. I'll do one to show you and then. So you're going to cut it in half. Cut it in the quarters. And then on the on a diagonal, you're going to slice that core out, okay. and then cut that. Sorry, here, trying to get the core out. <laughs> yeah, and stab me in the process. I didn't. I didn't actually stab you. All right. That pan's about hot enough to get our pork in, and then we got to take our potatoes out. Where'd the core go? Huh? Oh! <laughs> you dropped the core? No, it went on the side of the knife. Oh. <laughs> Alright. 
our pork is in the pan getting it so you only want to do the put your pork in there for about four to three to four minutes per side right now I'm going to go ahead and uh, move this big pan over here because that's where our potatoes are going to go these are just about ready to get in that pan I just want to drain them so you want to keep about a tablespoon of water in here because that starchy liquid will help your potatoes crisp up more. Unfortunately, I have a pan that has a strainer in it. Now, I always use bouillon cubes or stock to boil my potatoes for this because it just tastes better. It really does. Like, if you could smell the the scent coming off of that pan that I just drained. It smells like chicken soup. All right. So here's our drained potato pot. And you wanna go ahead and season your potatoes in this hot pot because the, hot, the heat will actually help your potatoes soak up that flavor. So we're gonna get our salt and pepper. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw two tablespoons of butter right into this hot pot. Whoops, almost got the extra butter. <laughs> Actually, this entire stick is probably going to be used in this. So, so what you want is to kind of stir that up so that the butter kind of starts. I almost banned you, noobs. What? Be careful about that. What do you say? Want to become famous? Oh my God. I almost noobs. just auto banned you for that. Okay. <laughs> so we've got a a t about two tablespoons of butter melting into the pan, the hot pot with with our potatoes, and now I'm just going to throw another tablespoon into the pan. And let's check in on our pork. Oh, I needed to put some of this uh, Tuscan spice seasoning in here. If you're not confident enough to shake this pan like this, you can go ahead and use a, a spoon to do this. All right, let's check in on our pork. Okay. Yeah. How are you doing, noobs? That looks really good so far. All right. And we're gonna go ahead and turn on the pan for our potatoes because these potatoes need to need to be on the heat for about 20 more minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, once you get these potatoes spread out in this pan, do not move because you want to let them sit in the pan and create that crust before you flip them. Same thing with like if you were making hash browns. As you can see, she's full of energy right now and I'm not. I'm I slept for an extra hour and a half after he left for work and did, I did not work today. So I just went ahead and flipped our pork chops and we'll get that nice browning on this side. Like I'm good, but I am I have a new job in a warehouse and it's not climate controlled, which means it, you know, however high it is outside, it feels five to ten degrees hotter inside. Yeah. And I'm on my feet all day. Which does suck. So I'm tired. Alright, while that's cooking, I'm going to go ahead and get 
our other pan going for our apples. Now, because it's only the two of us, if I was doing more than the two more than two apples, I'd get a bigger pan, obviously. When my mom would do this, she would do five apples because there was four of us eating this. So she had so each one of us would get our own pork chop, and then she would always do uh, fried potatoes. Not the way that I'm doing it, but oh, something similar. Apples. Huh? I thought you said fried apples. I am. We are. So we always did fried apples and fried potatoes. We live in the Midwest. Frying is pretty much the best way of uh, cooking something in most Midwestern, Southern, Not American. Best way. Most flavorful way. The default way. I don't even think it's the most flavorful way. But I actually tweaked my mom's recipe. I just threw about two tablespoons of butter into the pan for the apples. I mean, you don't like fried chicken, so... That's true, I don't. Shut up about frying being the best. Okay, my problem with fried chicken is the bones. I like chicken strips just fine. That's not the problem. I don't like the bones. What's the problem with the bones? I don't know. I'm weird. Leave me alone. Yeah, what's, you know, it's the original meat, not ground up chicken nuggets. That's true. Not ground up chicken beaks and feet and buttholes. You're a chicken butthole. <laughs> Hot dogs are pig lips and assholes, so why wouldn't no. chicken nuggets be the same thing? Why? Shut up, please. So would chicken. Nobody wants to hear that crap. Will you please grab a paper plate so I can get our pork out, please? It's almost ready to go. Thank you. Everybody knows what hot dogs are. That's not how they are anymore. Yeah, it is. They're the waste meat. Meat, not filler. What? Never mind. And pink lips and assholes are waste meat. Alright, I'm going to start throwing our apples in You're the You're ignoring me now, aren't you? Yes. I'm just going to start throwing our apples into our butter. That's why I prefer sausage. Because sausage is a very specific portion. No, it's okay. not. Yeah, it is. It's ground up shoulder, isn't it? Depends on the butcher, I guess. Most most of the time, sausage is ground up tough meat, like shoulder. It's muscle ground up, basically. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get our it's uh, not, pork it's, chops. Well, it's not one specific muscle, but it's muscle. It's not waste meat ground up. Now these are still probably a little pink in the center, which is actually okay because we're going to throw it, these back into the sauce to cook a little bit more. Plus sausage just has more flavor than hot dogs. Alright, are we done talking about the sausage and the hot dogs? The pork chops. Stop. Pork chops are fucking good. Pork chops are actually the loin. Yeah, I know. Pork chops are delicious. Pork chops are good because unlike sausage or hot dogs or bacon, they absorb the flavor of whatever you cook them in a ton. Which means you can make pork chops taste like whatever you want. Hi, Goo. Hi, Goo. All right. So I'm going to get started seasoning our apples really quick, and then I'll get back while our mushrooms are cooking. So this is... I know it's in a honey bear, but it's homemade vanilla that my grandmother started for me, and that I just kept. Goopy, we're going to do a game tonight, but I'm I'm really worn out. I started a new job, and it's I'm on my feet all day in a warehouse with a concrete floor that is not climate controlled, which means however warm it is outside, it's about five degrees warmer inside, and I'm just tired. 
I don't think I can focus enough on the game to stream it right now. Once I get used to the job, I'll be better about it. So I'm throwing in a mixture of cinnamon, cloves, allspice, and nutmeg into our apples here. So yeah, these are going to be spiced ap fried apples. They're going to be so good. I mean, I am taking my rest. Cookie is relaxing for me. And streaming. I just don't think I could focus on a game well enough, on a game and a stream well enough right now. And yeah, I am standing off here to the side for the, a reason so that you can see everything that I've got going on here. Well, so, walk in the apples. So I got three pans on the fire here. One of them is going to be for pan roasted potatoes over here. This pan is uh, going, it, I'm making our sauce in. This is going to be our mushroom, our Dijon mushroom sauce. I'm uh, sauteing up the mushrooms real quick. And then back here, I've got spice fried apples going because why the hell not? This is something my mom always did for me as a, for my family as a kid and it's delicious. So I want to let these cook down a little bit more and let them release their own uh, juice into this pan. And then I'm going to hit it with some brown sugar to caramelize it, the, the apples. And they're going to be delicious. Now, if you want to take this a step further and do this and then like grind it up for like mm. applesauce, this would be awesome for that. We made pork tacos. Last week? Yeah. On stream. I don't like cooked spinach. I like raw spinach in a salad. I really enjoy uh, spinach salads. I'm going to turn up our potatoes a little bit more. And, and now I'm going to go ahead and stir them and check them see where they're at. At this point you won't see much crispiness going on because there's still uh, the, the liquid from the cooking from the boiling is still evaporating off. Okay. And you want them at pretty high heat so that they will go ahead and cook. The other two pans are at medium. Do we still need this? I think we're done with the cut that cutting board. What about the knife? Yeah, I think we're done with that too. Except for me plunging in your back! Ow! <laughs> Here in just a minute, after those mushrooms brown a little bit more, I'm going to throw our onions and garlic oh. in. Do, do you enjoy cooking? I mean, if you enjoy cooking, then yes, you really should. I really enjoy cooking. This is fun for me. And especially since the, this potato recipe is something that I developed on my own, I kind of Wait. tripped into this. You? What? You took a four-year course in cooking? That's cool. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get our onions in here, and but I'm not gonna put the garlic in quite yet. That's really cool. You spilled a lot of the seasoning. Oh, shoot. It's okay. <laughs> Come here. No. Come here. No. Come here. Go away. <laughs> That's cool. I, I took cooking classes in high school too. Not professional taught or anything, but I enjoyed it a lot. 
I took it as a slack off class my senior year and it ended up being one of my favorite classes. To the point where my second semester I actually changed to one of my classes to take the advanced foods class. To fucking fight this school to be able to change it too. Hmm. Why not? Did you just decide you didn't want to do it as a career or to have just issues come up or not want to work in the <coughs> in the high stress of a restaurant? Because I can understand that. That's one of the reasons why I will work in a donut shop instead of an actual restaurant. Working in a donut shop is a lot more fun because most of your clientele is either elderly people or parents bringing their kids. Or at least that's what it is in my job. And I love that. Okay. That does suck. That's too bad. Yeah. I didn't realize you had any conditions. And just a little bit of butter to our onions and mushrooms. Alright, now I'm starting to see the potatoes crisp up a little bit more. Alright, then that's great! <laughs> these pans but you'll notice that I've only messed with the potatoes once and that's because I need those to develop a really good crust and the only way you do that is to leave them the fuck alone. What? The potatoes. The potatoes? The potatoes? Yeah. Are you going to use the rest of butter? Yes. I told you the entire stick is being used for this. So a lot of butter. Yep. But spread out over three dishes, it's not that bad. So my mom would fry her uh, apples in oh. vegetable oil and then uh, and then put a lot of uh, sugar and spices on them. I'm using butter with with some vanilla and not as much sugar because hers were so sweet. So what do you want to do then? butter in your potatoes too because that'll also help them crisp up. These onions are almost cooked down enough to do more with the sauce. Not quite yet, but I will go ahead and throw the garlic in. Well, you could be a full-time streamer or Maybe eventually you'd like to get into development. Everybody has something they enjoy doing they can translate to a job. Yeah. 
Look at those potatoes, guys. Here in a moment. Give me just a second to stir these and I'll move. So you want to get these as as crispy as possible on as much surface area as possible because that'll make these just delicious. So after those finish crisping up, what we're going to do is throw on some paprika and a little bit more seasoning, and then we're going to melt cheese on top of these potatoes, and they're going to be wonderful. This is not a diet meal. This is definitely a higher calorie meal just because of all of the butter and everything that we're doing but it is going to be so good sorry my legs really hurt he's been at work standing all day so we're, we'll give him that all right now well, that our apples you know, if, you have, if you have a reason you can't have a job you have a reason you can't have a job but that's totally right fair. i'm actually going to throw a little bit more cinnamon onto that before i put our uh, brown sugar down now, if you don't like brown sugar, personally, I really do. Or if you've got any problem with any of these spices, you can absolutely leave it out. But I really like cinnamon. I really, brown sugar in certain things is really good oh, on apples. If you don't want to use brown sugar, you, or if you have issues with diabetes or something like that, you can absolutely use a artificial sweetener or like honey or something would be good too with, with this. Honey has sugar in it. I know, but like for an alternative to brown sugar. Yeah, but if you have diabetes, you shouldn't have honey either. That's true. Honey. That's not the point though. I don't know. And these will just make their own almost caramel sauce, which is going to be really awesome. And these are starting to get really nice color on them too. If you're using a metal spoon on a non-stick surface, be careful that you don't scrape off the Teflon or something. All right. Do you have like severe ADHD or? put about three about two tablespoons of brown sugar on these two which is a lot less than my mom did also if you want to use maple sh maple syrup that would be good on these two what's ODD heard of ADD but not ODD We're going to add the rest of our Tuscan heat spice. We're going to add most of this to the sauce mixture, but the rest of, and then a little bit on more onto the potatoes. But regardless, like I said, if gaming is what you enjoy, you can always stream. Yeah, we'll watch it. Maybe. If we're, like, around. Yeah, I mean, you're in Norway, so we may both be at work when you stream, but... We appreciate you being here hanging out with us, though. Wait, Netherlands. Netherlands. Not Norway, Netherlands. I know where you are. We know where you are. <laughs> I, I thought Netherlands, but... My mouth came up with Norway for some reason. All right, now that our onions are getting nice and cooked down, we're gonna start with making the sauce. So this is a packet of chicken concentrate. You can also use a quarter cup of chicken stock or a quarter cup of water and chicken bouillon cube.
Okay, interesting. If you ever want to talk about anything going on with you, we're always here. Please do. Okay, let's see. Alright. We're going to add this last little bit of our butter. ago now? Waiting for you to decide to stream again. This is about a half a table, a little bit less than half a tablespoon, half of an ounce of Dijon mustard. If you are doing this at home and don't want to use Dijon mustard, you could use honey mustard or grout, stone ground mustard would be good too. It was a mental health break plus like moving, wasn't it? You also took a break because you were moving as well, right? Alright. We are just about done. We've got about four or five minutes, ten more, I'd say. Four or five or ten? Which is it, woman? About five. Uh, of cooking and then plating. This is sour cream. We're getting too good at cooking. It's happening too fast now. This is about an ounce. Yeah, we finally figured out all of this. Maybe I should have waited to start the apples so that I had something else to do after this got done. Because we've only been live for 40 minutes. Really? Huh. Alright. That's... Yeah, but then I know you said you extended the break because of moving. sauce. That looks so good. Alright, now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and put our pork chops back into the sauce. To well, the first one was like an hour and 15 minutes. The first one wasn't that quick. And even then, these recipes say 30 minutes. And we, we take more than 30 minutes. Now that we've actually figured it out, it really doesn't take us that long anymore. So you want to go ahead and put whatever juice has collected onto your pan, your plate back in with the pork because that's all good flavor. It, no, it's not blood or anything. It's just the juice from the cooked pork. All right. 
we're going to let that sit for a minute and go ahead and put some of the mushrooms and onion mix on top of your pork because that will let it stay juicy. Depending on what you put on the steak, two hours is a very reasonable amount of time. Yep. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and finish our potatoes. This is the last thing we got to do. Everything else is pretty much done. This is just smoked sweet paprika. And I really just like to finish my crispy potatoes with it. It just tastes good. This is my personal preference. If you don't like paprika, you don't have to do this. And just stir that in a little bit. These are Beautiful. Take your spoon back out and get them all in a nice even layer on the bottom of your pan because now it's time to cheese them. So you can use cheddar or parmesan or really whatever you like. I have this bag of macaroni and cheese blend which is cheddar and uh, which is cheddar and mozzarella. This will be really good with this. And just put them right on top. Put the cheese right on top, however much you want to do. This pan is still on, so this the cheese will actually, actually will melt to the bottom of the pan, and that's fine as long as you've got a non-stick pan. I feel like that's a good fit. So now that the cheese is on there, we're going to kill the heat and just let it melt. All right, it's time to plate. I have the hiccups. I'm sorry, homie. Time to play already. It is time. Alright. So we're going to go ahead and start with our apples. Because I kind of want to see how those turned out. Yeah, you can kind of see a little bit of the caramel sauce. Not a lot because I didn't put a ton of brown sugar. But we're going to just divide these between our plates. If you wanted more of a caramely uh, sauce to these, you can absolutely put more brown sugar on them. But this is technically a side with these, so I didn't bother. They'll be a little sweet, but they'll mostly be spicy, which is good. All right. I came in and complained about the hiccups, and the hiccups went away. <laughs> Look at these. I'm going to go ahead and save the rest of our pan sauce because I want to kind of top our potatoes with it too. <coughs> I'm so excited about this. These, okay, you got to check that out. Look at these. These look amazing. Nice and cheesy. And crispy. And because we let them kind of melt, the cheese melt to the bottom of the pan, that cheese got crispy too. Yep. For sure. Beautiful. Yep. Or are you safe? What? Okay. I'm just going along at this point. Uh huh. Doesn't that look great, guys? I'm so excited to eat this. Oops, as it does. But first, we're going to talk with a little bit more of this mushroom and onion mix. If you don't want to ruin the integrity of your crispy potatoes, you can put the rest of your sauce on the, on the side in between your potatoes and your pork if you want. All right, let's get some forks. All right. 
that should be just about it for us. We're going to taste this really quick. Go right ahead. Try that apple. Let me see what you think. I don't think food is hot as you go on ahead. I just took a bite of the potato. It's really crispy and cheesy on the outside and perfectly flavored with a very beautiful creamy center to it too. It's awesome. These apples should be just nice and caramelized. And so let's try that. Awesome. Mm, mm -hmm. They're very sweet, but they also have a kick of that cinnamon. It's really good. This is awesome. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching us do this. <laughs> I de am definitely going to enjoy eating this. Work. Right. Now, we are going to go on a raid. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go sit on the couch and not get up until I have to go to bed. <laughs> Thanks everybody for hanging out with have us. Good night. Good night.